life father to be <laughs> we serve a good father isn't he awesome I don't know if anybody has not experienced God. The f- anybody has not experienced God for yourself? Don't be shy. Anybody? So we are in the same place and we're on the same accord, right? Not on the accord, no, you know. <laughs> Meaning he has been so good to us. When we think about his goodness and kindness and faithfulness, that is why we get excited in us. That is why we give him praise. Because he's good. Amen. I'm not, I don't feel you. Amen. All right. Step your hand. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. You can't move, you know. You can't move. Clap your hands. Father, hey, he's worthy of a praise. I am a, I am a father who will never ever fail me. I am a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father who will never ever fail me. Oh, rock of ages. Come on, let's do that one more time. I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father who will never ever fail me. Rock of ages. Let's do that one more time. I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father who will never ever fail me. Oh, my rock of ages. Let's lift him, lift him up, lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. The Lord is good. I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up, lift him up, lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. The Lord is good, I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up. Let's lift him up, lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. The Lord is good, I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up. Let's lift him up, lift him up higher. Let's lift him up higher. Hey, the Lord is good, I will lift him up higher. To somebody and tell them, I, I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a father, he will never ever fail me. Oh, Jesus is my father, he will never ever fail me. Oh, my rock of ages. Turn to somebody and tell them, I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a Jesus is my father. Come on, I like it. Turn to somebody else. I have a, I have a father. He'll never ever fail me. I am my father. Will never ever fail. Oh, Jesus is my father. Will never ever fail. Rock of ages. Will never fail. Oh, he is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. He is my... Is it your testimony? He is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. I have a... I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father who will never ever fail me. Rock of faith. Oh, I have a, I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a, I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father who will never ever fail me. He is, he is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. 
He is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. He is my secret weapon. He is my. I want you to affirm that in the atmosphere. Declare. He is my secret weapon. 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 I have a father will never ever fail me. I have a father will never ever fail me. Oh, Jesus is my father will never ever fail me. Rock of faith, rock of faith. Oh, I have a, I have a father will never ever fail me. I have a father. Jesus is my father, will never ever fail. Rock a bitch, rock a bitch. Let him up, lift him up, lift him up higher, lift him up higher. For the Lord is good, I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up. Let's lift him up, lift him up higher. Let's lift him up higher. The Lord is good, I will lift him up higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift him up. Let's lift him up. Lift him up higher. Lift him up higher. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a wonderful father. We just honor you, Father. He's a good, good father. Even when we feel we don't even deserve his love and care. He remains faithful. And so we're going to echo the fact that he's a good, good father. Oh, oh, oh. We love you, Father. Thank you for loving us. Oh, God. I've heard thousand stories of what they think you're like but I know tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I am never alone you're a good good father it's who you are who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are. Oh, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we can say our word you're, you're a good good friend
good, good Father. Tell him, it's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. I'm loved by you. lift your hands to him. Just lift your hands and bask in the presence of your father. Come on, say something to him. Whatever you can find, let's take this moment and just honor him. Let's honor him with our thanksgiving and our sacrifice of praise. Just think Think about his goodness. Think about his grace. That's brought us through. Let's lift our hands and adore him. Because he sees and he knows. Oh, and our praises go up to him as a sacrifice. Mm. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. Is this is your testimony this morning? Almighty, they've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Sing to Him. You, For your mercy never fails me. All oh, my days, they I've are held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, the moment that I wake up, till I lay, till I lay my head. I will of the goodness of my Father. Oh, all my life, all my life you have been faithful. All my life, all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. Oh, for you have led me through the fire. Yes, go ahead and tell him. And in darkest nights, oh, you've been close like no other. Tell him. I know you as my father, I know you as my friend, oh I have lived in the goodness, hey, all my life, all my life you have been faithful, in every season, all Oh, 
of the good of the good of God. Oh, all my life, yes, all my life, for all my life, you have been faithful in every season. All my life, you have been so.
we say great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. So pardon for sin and a peace that endures. Sun, moon, and stars <laughs> in their port above. Join with all names in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Oh, we say, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Oh God, we cannot quantify. Oh my God. Because before the foundations of the world, you saw somebody like me. You chose somebody like me. Regardless of the fact that I didn't know. Because I didn't know about you. Even though I didn't know about you. You considered me. Oh, great is your faithfulness, O oh, Lord, unto me. Only you are holy. Only you. Only you are wonderful because there's no one, for there's no one else like you who is faithful, who is faithful ever true. All my love, all my love. Can we do that one more time, lifting our hands to him? We say, only you, only you are only you are worthy, only you are worthy, only you are wonderful, only you
Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, man. It is indeed good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, I know it's Father's Day, and it's good to see fathers that are here. It's good to see men in the house, to tell you the truth. Men, they are. You know, Pastor Courtney always said, Mandaya, Mandaya, bless the Lord. Thank you. Welcome again to another Sunday service. Of course, it is Father's Day, and we're celebrating all our fathers, all our daddies this morning. You know, we pray that, you know, throughout the course of this service, you will feel very special indeed and feel honored to be a dad. And we just want to welcome our guest speaker, uh, Deacon Eric Olsen, right? Amen, 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 amen. I do have with me my young man right here. Yes, my young, upcoming, mighty man of God. 
Nathan Allen. So he and I will be co-hosting this morning. Is there anything that you'd like to say to them before we proceed? Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in here. Oh, you may see, guys. You may see. I hope you all will enjoy yourself through this service. Okay, <laughs> don't be shy now. <laughs> All right, we're moving right along, and uh, now we'll have our first scripture reading for this morning. I think it's a duet by Makeda and Ashley. Good morning, everyone. Scripture verse is taken from Deuteronomy 6, and I'm reading from verse 1 to 8. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which your, the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go and possess it. Thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, and all the days of thy life, and all the days that may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and I observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and ye may increase mightily, as the Lord your God of fathers hath Promise thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shall talk of them with those sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt salt behind them for a sign upon thine hand, and when, thou, when they shall be as honest between thine eyes. I could never make you love me more No matter what I do, your love is sure You gave your only son just for me Your heart on display for all to see I could never make you walk away your vow you made to me will never change. The promise of your love is forever. It's greater than the words you could say. A father's love, a father's love, your life in me. The air I breathe, the air I breathe. You always fighting for my future. 
I can see you're working for my good. You run to me and meet me where I am. In your arms I find your strength again. My Father's love, the Father's love. The life in me, the air I breathe, the Father's love, the Father's love, the life in me, the air I breathe, the Father's love, the Father's love, the life in me. The air I breathe, the Father's love, the Father's love, the life in me, the air I breathe. And thou shalt write them up to the post on thy wall and on thy gate. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee unto the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and godly cities, which thou believest not. And houses full of good things, and which fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not. And vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. Then when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth up to the, out of the land of Egypt, from the land of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shall swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, for the gods of the people which are around you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God amongst you. Least the anger of the Lord thy God and kind and kindled against thee and destroy thee from the face of the earth. This is the portion of God's word. Hello, it's me again. Um, Just to remind the fathers, the theme for today is men building walls. And we would like to welcome Sharna Freiter for... The blessing. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for having us here today. Most importantly, this morning, Father. We thank you for fatherhood. We thank you, O God, because out of you, you created so many more. And we are celebrating them today. Father, this morning, we ask that those who are faint, that you will give them the power. And for those who don't have the courage, Lord God, you will strengthen them. Father, this morning, we give you thanks for our homes. And for those homes, oh God, who are broken and there's no father, there's the absence of the father. 
I pray, dear God, that you will bring them closer to their home right now, wherever they are now, locally and internationally. Father God, for those who have the willpower to be here this morning, we lift you up and we give you thanks. And we pray, dear God, that you will grant unto them and perfect your love in them, the sacrificial love that you have, that even when they get tired and when they get frustrated of the things that are happening within the homes and are in, within the society, that you give them that inner strength. Lord Jesus. I thank you, dear God, that you're going to move mountain for them today. I pray that even as they leave here today, oh God, they may not leave the same way they came, but they will be refreshed and renewed. And that love that you perfect with them and the humility that you put in them, Lord God, it will help them to be bigger and better fathers even right now. Father God, as they're about to have the breakfast, Lord God, we place everybody that that has prepared it, O oh God. And we thank you, dear God, that as they eat this food, it may contribute to their health and they will be stronger, O oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for having them in our lives. Father, may you allow them to stand tall in their families. And for those who are doing well, O oh God, I pray that others who are not doing well may see the light in them and come along, O oh God, and to be better fathers. We thank you for them this morning. May you continue to lift them up with your heavenly spirit, your Holy Spirit, Lord God, I ask that you navigate them with it and allow them to know that your love is abundant and free and your love and your grace is sufficient for them even right now. Father, we thank you in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. There, Proverbs 23, verse 24 says, the father of godly children has caused for joy. What pleasure have children who are wise? So, Father, we pray that indeed that what legacy you will leave behind our wisdom to your children as they come into this world. And so now we like to get into the tributes to our dad. So, that is, sit back, relax. I can't sell it down here because you're not female, so you don't have no hair to let down. But hear what? Just relax yourself and enjoy, enjoy this times of tribute that our children has prepared for you. Amen? So now we welcome the preschoolers. Welcome them on board. Those are that beautiful fathers touching. Now we'll have the dance and poem by Primary Age.
A father's love is strong and true, a constant presence through and through. He guides and supports with a gentle hand and helps his family in every land. A dad like you is rare and true, a constant presence through and through. With love and care, you guide the way and brighten each day with your loving sway. Thank you, Dad, for all you do, for being a rock that's always you. Happy Father's Day with love and cheer to a, to a dad who's special and always near. His kindness, generosity, and care lets his family know he's always there. He works and sacrifices with dedication true to provide for those who depend on him too. With, with wisdom, patience, and a loving heart, he teaches, teaches he mentors and shows the way. He helps his children to grow and pray. May your day be filled with joy and delight, and may your love continue to shine so bright. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Was that what was that wonderful that is? Did you enjoy that one? Look here, I'd like to know which daddy can come up here and bust a, a bust a move the feminine. Which daddy brave enough can come up here and bust a move? You see them looking away, them looking away, them looking away. <laughs> them looking away. We're not brave like that. But I thank the um, the primary school age children for coming up here, bravely coming up here and doing that awesome performance. All right. So we're moving quickly ahead. Um, we now we'll have a mime by Tyreek Sutherland. Is Tyreek ready? All right. So why is Tyreek coming on? I want you to think, Daddy, think. Think of the time when you were a child and you gave your mom or dad, you know, some trouble. And now that you have children or a child of your own, what traits have you seen in that child <laughs> growing up? Anybody want to answer that question quickly? Maybe you don't remember. <laughs> yeah. You want to answer quickly? All right, so miserableness, stubbornness, um, headstrongness, um, a devotion and dedication to family. Uh, thank you, thank you. So you see, that's a reflection of you right there. You just said you, <laughs> not the mother. All right, so now we welcome Tyreek as he come along to do our song.
I must say, that was very impactful. I just want to thank all the fathers out there, all the men also. As the theme said, men building walls. I just want to thank the, the fathers for building the walls around us. I would like to welcome Shade for the song, please. Hi, everybody. Okay, happy Father's Day, firstly. Uh, this one is very personal to me as well, as I also recently found my dad. I didn't know him, so I found my dad. Um, and then, like, even just meeting him and, like, hearing his story. But I tell you, no, I want to just think that money never exists. And, and then I have to tell myself, all right, Shade, you exist. Because that's the only way you could exist if you have a father. So I must exist. And like me used to dream about him and all of them looking something like just what it would be like to have my dad, you know? And then to meet him and hear, like, everything that he did, like he was saying, you know, I was there at your birth. I used to come, he used to like him, used to come hide up in the tree, them, for come look for me. And then look at something there. He came to my school. I had sisters at my school, and I never know. Me and my sister go to the same school the whole time. My daddy. We never know. Him same used to come and he used to look for me. But we just never really crossed paths or anything. But just overall, just like hearing everything, you know? And then when we see him, can't I me look just like the man? Me look just like the man. <laughs> but it just goes to show that like you're there. As much as it's the stigma everywhere that, oh, fathers aren't around or whatever, they're there. Sometimes you just really don't know the real story, but they are there. You are here, and I appreciate you all. And this is my tribute to you as well as to my dad. Yeah. Oh, oh, one thing, though. We're going to clap. Like, uh, no, 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 no. Follow the clap. You were there before I knew myself, always there in my sickness and in health. Cover me in times when I needed help. Give us rain and sunshine, Lord, I'm overwhelmed. King of kings, when there was no one else. You touched my life and gave me all my strength. And now I'm happy that I'm in your presence. Lord, without you, my life makes no sense. Your love is wider than the ocean. It's higher than a mountain. It's deeper than the valley. Your love, your love, your love is wider than the ocean. It's higher than the mountain. It's deeper than the valley. Your love, your love. When I thought that this must be the end, mercy and grace you sent. Why you love me, I just cannot tell. Then you turn and call me friend. I wasn't even thinking about you then. But your love at the end gave me strength. And I will praise you, Lord. I will sing of your love forevermore. Your love is wider than the ocean. It's higher than the mountain. It's deeper than the valley. Your love, your love, your love. It's wider than the ocean. It's higher than the mountain. It's deeper than the valley. Your love, your love. Your love is so precious. Your love is so true. Your love is so beautiful. 
and I thank you for loving me. Your love is so precious. Your love is so true. Your love is so beautiful. I thank you for loving me. Happy Father's Day. Thank you so much, Shadi. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Father, how are you enjoying yourself so far? Is it going good so far? Is it going great so far? Ah, bless the Lord. So, I sound like when I'm enjoying myself. So I mean, barely a year. Are you having a good time, Daddy? Yeah. All right. All right, man. Yeah, man. Make me feel like we're doing something, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right. So, before a journey comes or while John is preparing himself to come to give you another awesome performance, I just want to share something with you, men. All right, so Proverbs 20, verse 7 says, The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So this now speaks volume. This scripture speaks volumes for me. It says, It calls us to reflect on the state of our character to examine the integrity of our actions, and to consider the legacy we are, we are leaving for our future generations. It challenges us to prioritize righteousness and live in a manner that blesses those who come after us. So, the question is, what would you consider a legacy to leave with your children? So think about that question, Daddy, while I read this poem to you. Fathers, your role is pivotal, your influence profound. In your hands, a legacy. In your love, strength is found. Though the journey may be tough and challenges arise, doing it God's way will make you wise. Take heart in the moments both great and small. For in your love, we, your children, stand tall. Your sacrifices and efforts don't go unseen. They are the reasons why on you we can lean. So press on, dear fathers, with courage and grace. Your strength and dedication will forever embrace. You're a beacon of light, a pillar, strong and true. So in our hearts, we'll forever keep you. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Amen. And is a journey ready? Anybody see a journey? All right. John is getting himself organized. I'd like to ask a daddy, what lessons has father would have taught you? Anybody would, any daddy would like to answer that question? What lesson or lessons is ready? So think about it while a journey comes. <laughs> Where's the journey? <laughs> All right, come, my dear. <laughs> so welcome him as he comes.
Thank you, Ajani. Thank you so much for that awesome dance move. Look here. I love it, you know, but Jesus knows. Yes, moving right along. And so, fathers, I hope that you are well treated so far with some fruits. And when well, you say you have to share yours, but that's being a daddy, you know. All is not yours. But that makes you a good dad because you're loving and you're sharing and you're kind, don't it? Yes, don't worry about it, man. So are you doing fine, Pastor Arden? Excellent, excellent. So I welcome all the children to come up to the front, please. All children to the front. Where are all my children? Yeah, all of them are my children. All children to the front, please. And come inside, children. Come inside. This is the time that you are going to be given the opportunity to give each daddy, each man a gift. So you are going to take one of these and go. In the meantime, can we ask the musician to play something for us, please? Thank you so much. Thank you, children. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So at this time, we're going to ask our pastor, pa Uncle Pastor Arden Patterson, to come up to the front, please. Please be gracious with your presence right here at the front, sir. Sure. Uncle Pastor. <laughs> you know how special you are to us as the church body. Ain't we ain't he special to us? Look here, man. Come on, man. You know? Make him feel special. And you have been here over the years, the many years you have been with us. You have not only been our pastor, but you have been like a dad to many of us here. Many of us. And we just want to say thank you, how much we appreciate you, how much we love you. And honestly, it's a privilege knowing you because you're so humble. Really, look here, you see this? Very humble. Very humble. And so I call Diane Johnson. Where's Diane? All right. Well, I call Diane to back me up here. <laughs> All right. So, Pastor, on behalf of the body, we'd like to say thank you so much for being our mentor, for being our father, for being 
a good, good father to us. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you so much for having our backs. And we thank you so much for your love and appreciation that over the many years that you have given unto us. And so with this, we'd like to present you with this gift basket of our love and appreciation. Uh, Diane, however, has another gift that she'd like to present to you. On behalf of myself and Alicia and the body of fellowship Tabernacle, we want. Uh, on behalf of myself, Alicia and the body, the members of fellowship Tabernacle, we want to say thank you for all that you have done. I know sometimes you may feel unappreciated, but we want to take this time out to tell you how much we appreciate you. Um, it says hard work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And therefore, we don't want you to be dull today. We want you to be on the brighter side. And as I say, thanks for being our pastor. And we thank you for all that you have done. And we want to say, go relax and enjoy yourself. And I hope you enjoy this little token of ours. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And thank you, thank you, thank you all. It's a pleasure being here, pleasure to serve. Thank you. All right. So, our dads are being served at this time. Or, and as they're being served, there are some questions I'd like to go around and ask you, puppies. <laughs> Remember, there's some question I was asking you to think about while, you know, you know, things were happening. So, I'd like to ask the question, what has been the greatest impact on your life as a child growing up? Any dad would like to take that one? What? had been the greatest impact on your life as a child growing up? You know what to answer? All right. You know you're not shy. All right. You must come back to any Any father would like to answer that question? Daddy, you like to answer that question? What had been the greatest impact on your life as a child growing up? taking care of me, no matter how rude I was at the time. Seeing my mother taking care of me and loving me, no matter how rude I was at the time. All right. So here what? Seeing that you, how your mom had taken care of you. And how has that been your approach into fatherhood? Well, it helped me to basically be, um, more patient and understanding with my child. Thank you so much. And your name is? Andre Barr. Who? Barr. I'm not here now. Andre Barr. Andre Barr. Thank you so much for answering those questions. Any, any, any other person that you would like to answer the question? No, you already know for me? <laughs> Uncle Merv. Come on, answer the question. What has been, what has been your, or uh, had been your greatest impact on your life as a child growing up? Outdoor fun. Hey. 
I was saying outdoor fun, not like um, presently where children are inside on computers and so. We used to run up and down and we used to play cow- Indian and cowboy. You understand? Them kind of things, eh? Those are the good days. Well, yes, um, I tried to teach them that don't just lock up in the house. You understand? Try and go out there and see what it's like out there. Play football, play cricket. You understand? Yeah. Right, thank you so much, Uncle Merv. All right. You ready for me now? All right. All right, good morning. Um, the greatest impact on me as a child, I guess, would say is creativity. Because my mother was very creative. So she made a lot of stuff. So it, I guess it would have birthed creativity in me. So when they come on to like homework and them look at something there, I made that. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. What did you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Are you fulfilling that dream that you what you wanted to be when you were growing up? Anybody can answer this. Well, any man can answer this. What qualities do you most value for yourself? Any man can answer that. What qualities do you value for yourself? Um, pleasant morning. Um, my... The, the qualities that I value for myself is um, um, patience, um, uh, I will put patience because it depends based on the work that I'm, I'm doing, I have to have patience to, um, to accomplish. And in regard to, uh, I have to be very calm. Mostly, most likely, uh, when I deal with them, I, I can't overreact because you know sometimes that when you overreact, sometimes that cause problems that you don't want. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Any other gentleman would like to answer that question? Oh, thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much. Morning, everyone. I think the, the quality that I value most of all in myself and in others, is integrity. You know, um, being true, being what you are supposed to be, what the Lord wants you to be, you know, um, when everyone is looking and when no one else is looking, you know, being true to the Word of God, you know, having that integrity and being right and righteous. Thank you so much for sharing. Amen. Amen. All right, so all the men are being served and eating, and I hope you really enjoy the food that you are being served. And so I'd like to welcome those who are coming here for the very first time. If this is your first time on a Sunday morning visiting us, you have never been here before, I'd like, well, we would like to welcome you the Feltab way. Is there anybody here with us? Very first time you're very first time Dika, the very first time you're coming here. Anybody else? You know the question I was going to ask you. Who invited you here? But you know what? Let me ask you nevertheless and I'm coming around. Your pastor. <laughs> okay, sir. All right, going around. 
Uh, my name is Fabian Wilson, and I was invited by many persons. So, Andrew Stafford, the Sutherlands. Yeah. All right. All right, Mr. Fabian. And how has it been going so far? How has it been going so far for you? It's going good. Great, great. And coming along, coming along. Uh, my name is Shavar. Good morning. My mom invited me to share today. Nice, nice. Anybody else? All right, coming around. Um, my name is Tazio Nooks, and I was invited by my son. <laughs> son, look here. They say a child shall lead the way. This is Tazio Nooks' dad. And Tazir is the one who invited his dad to come here this morning. Um, all right, all right. Hey, third time. I'm sorry, third time. You've been here before. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, so here what? Musicians, busway. Woo! guests. We pray that you indeed have a fantastic, awesome, blessed day with us. And we pray that indeed that you will come back again. So this won't be just your first time. Right, sir? This will be your first, going on to your second and third as long as God's will. You'll be here again and again. Amen? Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Bless you. All right, so we just allow the men to enjoy their meal and musician can you bust a tune while we you know no no do something Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy you're having a wonderful day. And we, we cannot big up God the Father enough. Hey. Not true. Hey. This song that we're about to do, I, I wish I could project the words for you. Can you hear me clearly? It says, who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Please give it up for my background vocals. <laughs> the multi-talented <laughs> musicians and musicians. <laughs> Can I get more on my mic? Intro. Hallelujah. We love you, Father. Who am I that the highest king? would welcome me I was lost but you took me oh your love for me can I do that again who am I that the highest king would welcome 
me. I was lost, but he took me and oh his love for me. Oh his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh it's free. At last he ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, he died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun set free, oh, it's free. given unto you. So we welcome again our worship team to come. Amen. change one thing 
a real man, one thing remains. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, your love never fails, never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives out. Never runs out on me. Your love. Your love. Your love. It is higher than, higher than the mountains that I face. You are stronger than the power of the grave. You've been constant through my trials and my chains. This one thing will never ever change. One thing real me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never run out on me. Yeah, your love never fails. Never give up. Never run out on me. Your love never fails. Never give up. Never run out on me. Your love, your love, your love, your love. In death, in death. In life, I'm confident, covered by the power of your great love. My death is pain. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. In death, in death, in life. I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. Oh, my death is paid, and there's nothing that could separate my heart from your great love. Your love, say, your love never fails, never gives up. It never runs down on me. Never runs down on me. Never fails, never, never gives up, up, never runs down on me. Your love, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs down on me. Your love, your love, your love. Your love, your love. Your love. Oh, your love. Let us give thanks for the offering at this time. Father God, we give you thanks, Lord, for your people at this time, Lord. And Father, even as I give thanks for them, Lord, we give you thanks for the free will offering, Lord, which your people have brought into your sanctuary even at this time. Lord, we just bless it right now, God. We pray, Lord, that even as it is, as it is used, Lord, in your kingdom, Lord, for the work of your kingdom here, that, Lord, it will go to continue to work here, Father. Lord, it will be multiplied and to be used in a special way. And, Father, even the, those who have brought their gifts this morning, Lord, we will pray and pronounce a blessing upon them, Lord. We pray, Lord, that it may return unto them even a hundredfold this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And Father, even as your servant is about to come, Lord, to deliver your, your word, Lord, to your people. Father, we declare your anointing. We declare goodness. We declare a free flow even now, Lord, that as he come, there will be liberty, Lord, to deliver the word. There will be a liberty, Lord, 
to just expound and to share, Lord, what you have given him to share and to deliver this morning. Lord, I pray for receptive hearts as, as your people would listen, Lord, as men, Lord, would be challenged, Lord, that, Lord, we will work in your vineyard to help to build that which you want to be accomplished at this time. So, Father, just bless him now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. And so before our speaker comes, I'd like to introduce our speaker to the body. Mr. Well, Deacon Eric Hosin was born in Kingston and in his formative years attended the Dwenny Park Primary and Calabar High Schools. He holds a Bachelor of Business Administration degree from the University of Technology and a Master of Business Administration from Nova Southeastern University. Mr. Hosin has been a Christian since the age of 15 and currently serves as a deacon and board member of the Church of the Open Bible. In addition to the foregoing, he is also an active evangelist and is frequently invited to share the gospel at other churches. He currently also serves as a justice of the peace. So anybody need a JP, you know where to find one. Yeah? Me need one. Mm -hmm. All right. So professionally, Mr. Hussein has served the insurance industry in various capacities for over 30 years. His most recent appointment was in June 2022 to the position of Group President of Life, Health and Pensions with Responsibility for Guardian Life of the Caribbean. Insurance, check it out. Where am I now? Yes. Mr. Hosin was awarded the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander Class for his contribution to the insurance industry. So in his spare time, Mr. Hosin enjoys gardening. Hmm. He is married and has three beautiful daughters. So with that being said, let us welcome our deacon, Mr. Eric Hosin. Thank you very much. Can we all just stand a minute, just stand a minute, and can we just lift our hands to heaven and just say, Lord, we just want to bless you and thank you, Father. You're a good, good Father. Just us who you are, oh Lord. Oh Lord, and we are loved by you. Oh God, we give you praise, we give you thanks, we give you honor, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to thy name, oh Father. Lord, we just lift you up, O oh Lord. You are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. You are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. You are fairer than 10,000. You are the lily of the valley, the brightest morning star. O oh Jesus, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We join with the angels in just shouting hallelujah. Glory to thy name. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, you are a good God. Lord, we just give you honor, we give you glory, give you praise. Cover us under your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Oh God, guide and direct us as we just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we give the Lord a nice hand cup of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can someone shout hallelujah? Can someone shout glory? And then finally, can someone just shout, praise the Lord. Praise oh yes, can you just turn to your neighbor before you sit and just tell them, be blessed, be blessed. Amen. Yeah man, tell someone, point to someone, tell them, be blessed. Amen. Be blessed, yes man. The Bible says, I will bless them that bless you. So just be blessed, be blessed. You may be seated, you may be seated, you may be seated. You know, when, when I came here this morning, I was wondering who told the leadership of this church that when I was a little boy, while people were talking about they want to be doctor and lawyer, that all I wanted to be was a truck driver. 
I want to know how to find that must be a divine. And <laughs> I mean, and then I see this chalk in front of me. I said, boy, look on that door. Eh? And then there was a time in my life of good friend of mine, my bridge, my bony file. We left cast together. We were in the Christian movement together. Bishop Stevenson Samuel, who is a bishop of the New Testament Church of God. And I'm not going to tell you this. So I didn't let go of that dream. So he and I decided to start a bus business. You ever start a bus business yet? No bother. <laughs> well, we started this bus business and we set up a company. You know the name of the company? Anybody can guess the name of the company? We are Christians and we're setting a bus business. What would you call that name? No, man. We call it Exodus Transport Living Dead. Transporting God's people. Well, our wives were telling us, no, no, do it. And we say, it's all right. When we have our fleet of buses, and fleet of trucks, and fleet of trailers, and boy, you know, watch, you know, because we might just expand into shipping too, you know. Well, three years after we sell the bus, we still pay back the bank money. <laughs> so to this day, anytime we come up with some brilliant ideas, me and Steve, my wife just remind us, Exodus Transport Limited. <laughs> Transporting God's people. <laughs> and you know it done, so. Because we can never leave it out, right? But I want to say thanks to Pastor Rachel and, um, what is it called, all right? Shelly. Shelly, Shelly. And the leadership for inviting me to share this morning. I thank the Lord for this opportunity. What a wonderful opportunity to come and share with God's people. You know, friends, I want to big up all the good, good father them. Because, you know, I know that people fall a crowd and say, Father, this and Father, that and how them bad and things like that. But I know that there are many good fathers. Many good fathers. I, 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 and, 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 and while none is perfect, I know that, you know, there are many fathers who are trying their best. Who are trying their best. I know that, you know, who love their children and are trying their best to take care of them. They are, you know, they, they just keep trying. I, I know, yes, we have some fathers out there that are, are, are really bad. I know that. My, mine was very, very bad. If you want to talk about the very bad, well, he's on like a top ten of the baddest. And I'll share some. You know, in a local, and, and, and you know, the, the theme today is a father's love. Fathers building the walls and guarding the gates. And if you want to love if you want to be a father and to love your children, let me encourage you, first of all, to just love them. Love them. In a local newspaper article about last year, around Father's Day time, you know, Horace Lindsay and his 14-year-old son, you see, demonstrated the unbreakable bond between a father and a son. When Horace said, to be a father, the first thing is love. If you don't have love, you can't be a parent. You may have been a sperm donor, but you can't be a father. So often we hear about all the bad things and all the terrible things. You know, but many are the fathers. They love, they love, they love drives them to work hard for their children. Work them to provide. They can't provide everything, but they try what they can. And the love is genuine. Many fathers follow First John 3 and verse 18. My little children, let us love not in words, but in deeds. Because, you know, mouth makes for say anything. Man can't say anything to girl. Boy, I'll swim ocean. I'll climb mountain and them can't even, them free the water. But them say them swim ocean and they don't want the water to go past them ankle. You know? So mouth can't say anything. But here it is that it is saying we must love in words. And old people tell you, if you have to choose between words and deeds, choose the deeds. Sometimes it's hard for them to say how much they love their children because, you know, we don't feel like you're a man and, you know, you know, show no emotion. But, you know, nothing wrong with it, you know, friend. They not only give presents, but they are present. You know, some father believe that, but once I send the money going out to the baby mother, everything all right. And once I provide for the house, everything all right. No, what they need is not just presents, but they want you to be present. You know, and so it is so important that as you love your child, you set a good example. You give them the best advice. It might, it might not be the brightest, but guess what? You know, it is you providing them with some day-to-day -day living skills and ensuring that they understand. 
But maybe you look at me and you say, boy, this boy is like a red boy, you know. Most of all, one little uptown boy come from New Kingston. Or up up Cherry Garden and Narbrook and all them places there. He him not know about father, man. He, him, boy, they, him boy born with gold spoon and more. Well, let me just share with you. A Jubilee, my born. Anybody born a Jubilee? Yeah, yeah man. Me have no friend from Jubilee. Jubilee is like a factory. You, know? you run in, you run out. And you pop out and you just run out again. <laughs> right? <laughs> a Jubilee, my born. A Max Seal, my come from. So, no ramp with me. A Max Seal. I'm going to come from near halfway tree. I come from down a Barnes Avenue, down a no man's land. A this where I come from. You know? But what is God is good. His mercy is everlasting. You know, my brother, things were, you know, I, I, we went through some very, there were nine of us. My mother was, boy, I'm going to tell you, she just, uh, she just uh, breed them up. A nine away. Boy, my mother was a breeder. I don't know, I should lose two, so we nearly have a football team, you know. Nearly 11 of us. But, you know, we lived at Maxi for a while, a long time. My mother, you know, when I was young, we moved from there, we went to Washington Garden, went to Dwayne Park Primary School, I went to Calabar High School. And while at Calabar, I gave my life to the Lord. I, I, I gave my life to the Lord when I was 15 years old. Actually, I gave my life to the Lord in the country, out in Falmouth, where I went to visit some my aunt. But, you know, friends, life was very difficult. A very difficult time. I know what it is not to have light or water. Light cut off, water cut off. You know, I, I know what it is not to eat. And it's not fasting, we're fasting. It's just that for days you don't have no food. But you just never know, say, you're poor, you're poor. Your neighbor used to allow me to jump the fence. I was the one who jumped the fence, hook up the hose to the neighbor pipe. I was just stealing water and put it over. I mean, them times, they never know about bridge light. Maybe them that send me a bridge light. <laughs> but, you know, friends, God was good. My father was a you know, back then, in the 70s and 60s, my father was a herb man. He used to smoke herb. And when he said the herb busting I made, he used to just beat me to a frazzle. He had a special love for beating me and butter bruising. But that was, you know, you know my sister used to have to have sometime lock me away and, and tell him to kick down the door for coming. Because it's like, I don't know what drive this man for one take it out from me every time. Because he might have mother picked me then, but he might share it up equally. He might give me the most... <laughs> Are everything basically, you know. But but th- that was how my father was. He never provided. He was a real little trickster. He had a woman and thing out of road and children out of road and you know the story of Jamaican man them and how them behave. Which but not only did was he having children, but as I said he was very abusive. So when I got saved, it, I was about fourteen, fifteen, and I got saved, and the Lord provided. Real peace and comfort in difficult time because the abuse never stopped. But you know, two years after, you know, I, I heard a, a, a little young lady come up here and she was singing, "Boy, the picnic can't sing." Um, uh, and and really about not knowing her father. I want to tell you, at that time, I was sorry I knew mine. Genuinely sorry. In fact, the day he decided to leave the home and leave us permanently was one of the happiest days of my life. You can't imagine when I get pure butter bruising, man. You're not happy if your man gone. I mean, you know, some of you might say, oh boy, that's hardy. My friend, me happy. I know you will get the lick, them, you know, and the thump and the lick and all that kind of thing. So I understand what it is in terms of, in terms of what was happening. And so I continued. You know, one day about loving your father, Loving your, your children. One day when I was young, I met a Rasta man. I had three, it's three girls picking me up. He's a girl's man. Three girls picking me up. And one. But let me tell you. You see all him over there, so? I see him daughter sit down on him lap, you know. You, man. And she was like, eat out him food, you know. Let me tell you, girl picking me up easy, you know. I didn't know me out. Let <laughs> me tell you, man. But I take in too much time. But let me tell you another story. One day, you know, I'm here in the living room. My wife got to church. We come back home and sit down in the living room. And my daughter, she come in and we read the newspaper and thing. My daughter come and sit down beside me, you know. I'm going to kiss her on her forehead. She turned to me, you know. Look, look, pick me, you know. And I said, Daddy, that went straight to my heart. <laughs> After that, she walked away. And about half an hour, she come back. And she memorized our list of things she wants, you know. <laughs> and everything she said she wants, I say, yes, yes, yes. 
my wife turned to me after she walked back out. You are idiot. You know, see the picnic trick you up. Both gone straight to your heart and all them foolish is there. You know, see all the picnic food. I said, look here, hold on, hold on again. She named Gian. Gian is my honey bunny, my baby love. It's 38 years. She married me. She put up with me for 38 years. Somebody said to her, but Gian, we married now for about 8 years. And never once have you told me when I kissed you that it goes straight to your heart. <laughs> so when the penis said, goes straight to your heart, anything she wants, she will get. <laughs> anyway, that's not the part of the story, man. It's pure laughing joke business. You're going with it. But cut it down. You know, a few years, you know, um, this Rasta man, I saw this Rasta man, and he said to me, my youth, brown man, where I say, right in half a tree. He said, brown man, where I say, man? I said, I said, I'm there. I don't know this man, you know. The man said, my youth, how much picnic you have? I said, boy, I have three, you know, three girls, you know. He said, boy, my youth, that's all. I said, yeah, you know, boy, you know, I can't really manage anymore, you know, I have to take care of them, and me, me try, you know, do because at that time, you know, me and my wife, we know nothing, you know. We, 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 our, our friend them who cook for the wedding. As I saw our wedding going, our friend them who cook, come together and cook some food and that at the wedding and thing. And he said, my youth, you idiot. And I saw it go in a brown man. And I saw it go. Your role is to just have them. You just have as many as you can, my youth. Three a joke, brown man. He said, look on the hands from the ground. He said, look on the hands from the ground. He said, yes, he said, them. Your rule is for us have them just like the ants. And, and Jah will take care of them. You know, my friends, without even some of our men saying that, that's exactly how they think. They just have them and leave them for us run wild and become anything they want to be and run and be a pure badness. You know, um, it, is, it is so sad. A few years ago at a parenting forum held in Maypen, Clarendon, a male student in a high school stood up and gave credit to his single mother for raising him and his siblings on her own. He praised her for standing by them, ensuring their needs are taken care of. To him, there was no one like for him, Mama. You know, some man, you can't tell them about anything. In fact, if you tell them about them, Papa, them say, boy, that the wicked, they make him dead. But if you mention them, mother, death and powder house. But you hear what the boy said afterwards? But he expressed a longing for relationship with a father. He said, But I want a father to teach me to fix my bicycle. Teach me how to treat a lady. Or just being there for me. He told the gathering. And therefore, fathers, that's why I said, let us not just give presents, car, you know, money and bicycle, but let's give our presents to them. Being a father requires much more than money. It requires our friendship and our love. The strength and power. Some of you may not even remember because they don't bring up themselves. But last year, they came to prominence again because they have never died. There is a gang, one of the oldest and more, most dangerous gang in Jamaica. That a lot of people don't even know what they think, some of the evil that they do. It is called the Fatherless Crew. And last year, there was a serious amount of killing. And they said, boy, the police in Denham Town said the Fatherless Crew do it. There was a young man who was a part of the fatherless crew who became a Christian and was testifying. He said, he was sharing with me and he said, Eric, can you don't understand? The love that, and commitment and the dedication that the gang members have for the gang leader, for the Don. Because the Don in the fatherless crew is your father. He's the one who is providing for you, leading you, guiding you, teaching you. Showing you how to be a man, but showing you the wrong way to live, to kill, to murder. But he says their loyalty and commitment is like ISIS. They will die for the father because this is the father they know. And they are, you know what they call themselves? The fatherless crew. Them the Hana Pupa. And they will die and kill for that father. You hear girls who have gone into prostitution and all kind of things. They were longing and looking for the love of a man. And they found it in the pimp. And they found it in this little guy who does a baby for them and them a baby for them and all kind of things. What are you doing? What you are doing by not being present is allowing something dangerous to take place. 
the scripture in First Thessalonians 2 and verse 11 to 12. It says, as ye know how we exhort and comfort and charge every one of you, as a father doth his child, that we walk worthy of God, that hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Fathers are called to be encouragers, exhorters. As you read in the scripture here, um, to be comforters and urgers. The Greek roots suggested from the Greek of this is that the fathers have a role of motivating, setting example, and calling out purpose, identity in your children. One Greek word also used here means to come, call alongside, meaning fathers, again, I'm calling on you to be present, be in the lives of your child. I remember one of the things my wife did, and really, I I have a love that woman there. She said, all right, we have two children at the time. All right, you take one school, me take one school. So I chose Immaculate and because one, my daughter was going Immaculate, one was going camp, and, 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 and therefore I became a part of the PTA, got involved with it because, you know, I said to guys, look here, I was very busy. I was involved with, with God and life. I was a vice president, very involved with church. But even if I have a run, go PTA meeting and run, come back home, come back to the office, I would go, I would try sometime and tell the driver, I will pick up my children. Look here, I will pick them up today. I will pick up today because I try to be as present as I can, not just when I come home in the evenings or on weekends. You know, based on the scripture, the Bible is telling us to be a provider, protector, nurture. Be a model of to our boys as to how to treat a woman. These include father, you know, you know there's a lot of father absenteeism. So many things happening. Father is far more than just being a sperm donor. You know? Like what Rastaman was saying. All you have to do is have them and Jah will take care of them. No. Jah have you to take care of them. And therefore, love them should be an eternal love. I tell persons that this is what everlasting life gives. It gives you an eternal love for your children. And that is what I, I, I have been holding on. One of the things that made me hold on to be a Christian is my love for my children. I tell them, look here, all the things said is that I will die first. As so it go. But I love you so much, I want to make sure I go to the place of up glory that I will see you again in heaven because my love is not limited to this time here on earth. My love is an eternal love. And that is why I hold on to being a Christian. Because I have not a temporary love for my children. And I am not doubting that some men don't love their children, you know. But friends, the only way your love can be everlasting for your children is if you are saved, if you are born again, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I just saw it set. I just saw it set. I saw the thing go. You may love them and you love them. Boy, Eric, I can't, you don't know me love them bad, bad, bad. We know you love them bad, bad. But my friends, what you don't have, unless you are saved, is an eternal love for them. Oh, take care of them. Having my first child was a life-changing experience. It made me become even more mature. You know, even yesterday I heard some men two days ago at office explaining how life-changing having a first child was. You realize, for those who are Christian. You read about Enoch and Enoch walking with God. But you realize what happened to Enoch before he began walking with God? How many of you know that? Most of you only know say Enoch walked with God. And he said, boy, Lord, I want to walk with you, Lord Jesus, and talk with you. But before Enoch, hear what it says. And Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. You hear that? He had a child. And the same sentence is not like, oh, later on, it says, later on. He, no, it says, Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. 300 years the man walked with God. And God eventually took him. Because the walk, that's another sermon. But the walk was a, not just a, why am I just a walk? And you see, you hear what it says? Enoch walked with God. Not God walked with Enoch. God was leading Enoch. Friends, bless your children. Bless them. Kiss and hug is, are, 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 are allowed. Whether it be a boy picnic or a girl picnic, you see all my boy, I'm hug up the girl. You can imagine when him get to him, the list of things he have to go get let off. Hugs not come free, friend. 
So, <laughs> you know, Enoch in blessing his children. He said, he said, you know, blessing Jacob. He said, May, well, he taught us Enoch in first child. He was blessing it is really Jacob. You know, picking up a trickster. He says, may God give you heaven's dew and earth's riches. And abundance. You know what I'm telling a lot of children? All I'm here is, you watch this, you know, go, you know, come first, you come fifth. You know, you're not going to turn out to nothing. It's like when I was a little boy. You know, you look at me now, you say, why not? The boy must be bright in a school. Yeah, bright. Well, look here. I came like out of 35 picking at the class. No, it used to be 40 of us. I always in the last 10, but never in the last 5. So I was consistent. In fact, when I got common entrance, anybody did common entrance? Nobody, all right, you know, you have a hide and say, no, I never do that. Come on, nobody knows I'm old. Remember, you used to have half a scholarship? Well, a half me get. And when me get half, the teacher cuss. She said, Hussein, you're not supposed to get nothing, you're too dunce. <laughs> but you see, God's grace and mercy have me, I know. <laughs> oh, God is good. So, you know, sometimes you look at them and you say, boy, look here, you know, I do the, you know, in a top five, you know, in a top one, I think, you know, go. no, my friends, you can't continue to tell the people, no, them wordless, them are good, you know, you know, you say, boy, you're turned wordless like a pooper. People could have said that to me too, but guess what? Look what God has done. Look how God has changed our life and made me a better person because he never made me be like my pupa. In fact, one of the things I want to thank my father for is he showed me what I should not do if I want to be a good father. That I can thank him for. You know, that I can thank him for. So my friends, many children don't see a future because all they see is doom and gloom. And some of us already preach to them bad things and how they're not good and they're not this and not that. Sometimes you have to allow the people to live out them life, you know. Some of us, even mothers and fathers, you tell them about oh, the, the, the woman not good and you tell them about your, your wife, your picnic mother not good and you tell the picnic, you know, the wife tell the picnic father, or your father worthless and no good and tell them they would come in worthless like them pooper. Hold on, that's a problem between you and the father, you know, and you and the mother, you know. Leave the picnic, make them enjoy them childhood now. Them they need for no certain. Yes, they need for no certain. Why would things hard, you know, we don't have, have the money, can't buy this, the brand new bicycle, you know, we get a little hand me down thing and thing, right? Hand me down. Let me tell you something. Hand me down. I remember one day some girls laugh after me, like, like I mean, four girls, you know, they used to go to this church and them laugh at us, con man, because guess what? We don't laugh to me, they look like a man like me, you know. The pants. But they did not know that I was a trend setter. I was ahead of my time. Because my pants used to cut off up your saw. <laughs> One day I went to Italy. And I saw a pants. My brethren. You know how much money for the pants? Enough money. I said the pants up your saw. I said, you see that? <laughs> if people that follow the trend, you know. Look at they make good money. With the short pants and the tight up clothes, and kind of the toes, they tight because I hand me down. And my brother, him never did grow fast enough to hand it down fast enough. <laughs> so, I have to keep wearing it, it is tight. But you know, friends, God is good. And so, children don't see what it is. Today, our children are under so much pressure. Much more pressure. I tell people, when I was at Calabar High School, a man bring all a one page out of Playboy book and show a man. <laughs> and everybody excited about this one page. You know what? The people never go through on the internet now. The kind of pressure them under with the LGTB and all them people here. And all the people who are trying to trick them into all kind of lifestyle that is no good. That is dangerous and evil and against God's will. So, my friend... Leave them, make them go through and try to help them now. Nobody pressure them too much. The second thing, so the first thing I say to fathers, one, love your children. Mothers, love your children. Because oh, this is fathers, dear. this is for all parents. Love your children. The second thing is, remember, if you love your children and you want to be a good father, you must love their mother. You can't love the picnic without love the mother, you know. And also love go. You have to love the mother too. Right? It's a, it's a package deal. It's a meal deal, KFC meal deal. You buy it. You can't say, I don't want the fries. It, it, the three pieces. You hear me say three pieces? Because guess what? The mother have a piece. Him have a piece. And the picnic have a piece. A three piece. 
but it is a meal deal. It comes together. It comes with a drink. The mother and the picnic come together. You can't have it separate. You say, no, I just want them said, and the, the deal you want. You want us a piece of single chicken. Right? So it's a meal deal. They don't just read past verse. You know, some parents, the, the fathers, them say, look here. Ephesians 5 and verse 22. Because you have some Christians, you know, fathers, you know, who now really live up to right, you know. Them love read Ephesians 5 and verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband as unto the Lord. Yeah, man. You hear the Bible say, woman, at that you submit. You know, but they don't read on to verse 23. The next verse it says, For a husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the serf, church, and he's the savior of the body. We must be loving and kind and caring for the child's mother. There was a song, many of you may know it, but then if you're a Christian, then you wouldn't know it. See? We run things, things are run we. I won't bother to ask you if you're a piano pastor, you know that. Eh? Oh, you know what I'm a song? That don't oh, come on love with him. <laughs> right? <laughs> but there, the, in the song, right? In the song, there is a verse, there is a line in the song that many people don't even realize. And it, it says, we rule girls. Girls no rule we. That's why every girl have to respect we. Now, many people ask them about the song, we run things, things don't run we. My, my, we are gone, you know, so. <laughs> but what it on, Pastor? What it on? But you hear, we run things, things. But we rule girls. It never said we work with the girls or we love the girls. We rule them. You know what rule mean? That's why fairy girl happy. Not they may want to, you know, or may they may lovingly respect you. Them happy respect we. Three years ago. A man in Clarendon killed a woman and three children. You remember that? And everybody is in shock and fear. But you hear what the guys when them ask him, why did you do it? He said, boy, the woman this him and I'm to deal with the case. She disrespect him. And that is the problem. He disrespect and them don't, if it, you know, they want to rule the woman and want to deal with them case. And my friends, and I saw it go. And I saw it go. Because every man is now left to his interpretation of what is rule and what is disrespect and what measures he's going to take to deal with the case. You know, fathers, love your, child, your child's mother if you want to love the child. She's your partner in growing your child up. And you, if you want your children to grow up right, you want a woman who's going to help partner with you in loving the child and growing them up. You don't want to kill them with beating and all kind of things. You know, there's a thing, there's a study that was done and it says why marriage matters. It says marriage actually increases the likelihood that father and mother have a good relationship with their children. So I want to encourage you to be married. Two, they say cohabiting is not the same as marriage. Cohabiting couples on average are less committed, less faithful, and are more likely to break up than married couples. And the third thing, growing up outside an impact, intact marriage, increasing the likelihood that the child will themselves divorce when they become adults. Is just so it go. So how is it things have gotten so bad? You know, people ask how things get so bad in the society and things gone so bad. My friends, I want to encourage us. To look at the very little things. You know, sometimes we have children and we hear them, you them a birthday party, and them start playing songs like five cent, ten cent, dollar, and we start saying, Oh, wow, my picnic can do the five cents and ten cents, so good, look how good them at five cent, ten cent. But as them grow a little older, they must take it to a next level and go for the ten thousand dollar. And then come home with belly, and then you say, Boy, picnic have five different baby mother. And you wonder what is happening. But you say, look at five cent, ten cent dollar. Because the Bible tells us, train up a child in the way that they are to grow. That when they are old, they shall not depart from it. What is it that you are playing at home? What kind of music? What kind of songs you hear in the car? What kind of things? How them diss and beat up girls. And oh, you have enough girl and girl in a bungle. Girl from Reem and girl from? Where you know that from? <laughs> I tell you, I don't understand because them songs that play for love with them, you know. 
But my friend, on a serious note, what we teach our children, don't joke around. They are going to get involved. And they're going to take it to another level. This morning, the scripture that was read, Deuteronomy 6. I want to encourage you, when you get home, to spend a little time in reading Deuteronomy 6. The entire chapter. Because if you look on Deuteronomy 6, verses 5 to 18, it says, first of all, if you want to be a good parent, there are 12 things that you should try to do as a parent, if you want to be a good parent. This is the word of God, God trying to say to you, you want to be a good parent, whether it be a mother or father. It says, one, love the Lord with all your heart. Give everything you've got in loving God. The first thing, if you want to love your children, love God. The second thing, because remember, after you have loved the child and you love the mother, the third and final thing is you need to love the Lord. You need to love God. If you want to be a good father, you love your children. You love the child, you love the mother of the child, and you love God. But it says, in the, the second thing it says is, have God's word in your heart. Not only on your phone, and, and, and in the Bible, right? On a book. Have it in your heart. So that when you are walking with them and talking with them, teach them, which is the third thing, God's word diligently. You, you can't be teaching them on a read and a walk with them. It says when you're walking, when you're talking, when you're driving, you should be teaching them. You have to have God's word in your heart. You know, Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. Right? The fourth thing, I was going to go through quickly with the 12, right? Talk to them when sitting in the house. You know, just take time out and talk to them about God's word and goodness of God. Five. Bind them on the sign of your head and your forehead. Meaning that everything you're thinking is scriptural. Right? That God is the center and all in all of all you think. Let it direct your thoughts and your actions. The love of God. Number six. Write them on the doorpost and the gate. Don't have all kind of signs upon your house. You know, some of we have um, our shoe upon the gate. Our shoe upon the front door. Or what kind of demon thing you want to play with a demon, I'm not bringing the house and I set the picnic them, you know. And somehow we have Isla this and Isla that. And Isla will do this and Isla and God ring and all kind of foolishness. Let me tell you, you play with the devil, him love it. You can't play in a but remember, remember one thing. While you may have many objectives in life, you have like 15 or 20 objectives in life, the devil only have three. His aim is to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he's going to do to you, he will do to your family. Because he's not an objective. He just wants to steal your joy, steal your peace. He wants to kill you physically and eternally. Because he wants you to be eternally dead like him. And then two, three, steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your relationship. He wants to destroy anything you have as a parent. Anything. God's love fathers. He will be a good father to you. Number seven. Remember to serve God and serve Him in prosperity and in success. You know, some of we only want to serve God because we are so far. And we want something. We want Him let off. No, my friends. It says, fear God, reverence Him. Number nine, detest idols. Don't bother with make the, I, the house, the car, the, this, the job, the boss be an idol. Number ten, refrain from tempting God. Number eleven, keep the commandments, the testaments, and the statutes. Verse seventeen. And number twelve, do that which is right in the sight of God, not just in the sight of men. Some of we only do well when we people are watching. But God are watching all the time. I want to encourage us to be good. You know, my friends, after about 20 years of not seeing my father, which I thought was a good thing. I never even mentioned him to my picnic. Him. I never mentioned him. One day I heard a young man named Milton testify in church about forgiving his father. I tell you, man, that I'm a big, big in a church, you know. I do crusades, street meetings, all kind of things. And I tell you, man, I ball like a baby. Big man, I ball in a church. Water does run out of my eye. I realize that all these years, I've never forgiven the man. But the Bible tells me, because I said it over for every day, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. I have never forgiven him. I realized that, that day that I was an unforgiving Christian. And that is a bad thing. I went to look for him. I started to look after him, the woman him leave, and him, him leave my mother for. And I would every month, for three years, make sure every single month, food and money reach him. Take care of all my medical bills. Him. 
he gave, after three years, he gave his life to the Lord. Stop smoke curb. Stop cause bad word. Start reading Bible and go to church. He lived another ten years after that. And has gone home to glory. But he was 80 when he gave his life to the Lord. What I'm saying to you, I gave my life at 15, he gave it at 80. I have no regrets, my friend. I have seen the reward of what the devil gave to my father for his bad living. I've seen the reward of some of my classmates. The womanizing, the drinking, the smoking, the gambling. And the reward for that. And what they don't even realize. That the wages, the reward for sin is death. And it's not just a temporary death. You go six foot six. It's an eternal death. But the Bible tells us the gift of God is an eternal life. And therefore, you know, my friends, as I said, you need to love our children. We need to love the mother of our child. And we need to love the Lord. I want to encourage us all even more. It says, if a child comes to Jesus first, the rest of the family will do the same. 3.5% of the time if the child comes to Christ first. If the mother comes to Christ first, there's a 17, 17% chance of the family, the rest of the family coming to Jesus. But you know what, friends? You see how men are influential. No matter who man, I know you know influential, but you know how influential a man is. If a man comes to Christ for, to first, there is a 93% chance that the entire family will come to Christ. And therefore, I keep saying to men, men, come to Jesus. May God will make you a better father, a better mother, a better friend, a better person. God will make you a better child, no matter who you are. I'm 64 this year. And this year, I've seen the benefits of accepting Jesus Christ. And I've seen the pain that others have experienced from not accepting Christ. Some people say, why also not? Because you don't know how bad living good. Yes, sin is nice. But sin has a price. Sin has a price. And you may feel it sweet. And you trick, trick up enough girl. Remember the Calabar now? Man used to boo how much girl him have. And boy, you know, you trick up the girl. and trick up. It's sweet. But what pain and sorrow. You have no good relationship. You go old. And you pity them. No, I have nothing to do with you. That they are all wicked. And they must eat and evil. I remember one day my father said to me, How comes you are the one coming every month and you give me clothes and you give me this and you give me that. You, take, you are like a father to me. One to my other eight children. Where are they? I said, well, on the boss. It looks like you forget how things did really go. How you did treat me. Then now I come, you know. Some of them send the fool for tell us them soon come. One or two of them will send a money to me to give you to take care, take care of you. But and that not regular. Um, you know. You have to remember that there is pain. Sin brings pain. The pain of sin, the penalty for sin, the trauma of sin, and that sin will destroy you totally. He just could not understand. He thought that you know he, 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 people don't just forget, you know. You know, today, my friend, Jesus is calling us to be a better father, a better husband, a better mother, a better daughter. And he's asking you to make that decision to serve him and to love him. And he can change your life. I've seen my father after 80 years change his life. Because up to 80, he was still born in him herb. And I go on with him madness. One of his children from the woman who he had, as I said, I was taking care of him, the woman, and the children. One of the sons went abroad. Him, no, I'm not for him, cause him every day. No good relationship. Nobody no like you. Nobody no want you on you. I have seen it, my friend. And I'm saying to you, accepting Jesus Christ can change your life for the better. It can make you a better mother, a better father. That's what Jesus do, does. I just invite you, as you reflect on our lives, to just bow your head, everyone. If you will bow your heads and just reflect on your life. Are you living that life that y you are happy about? Yes, it may make it sweet to you sometime. But as you reflect, as a man, whether you have a child or not, as a woman, whether you have a child or not, as a young man or young girl, anyone... 
Do you want to be a better person? A better friend? I tell you that Jesus can do it. It doesn't make a difference how bad you are, how terrible you have been. God can make that difference in your life. Maybe you have been hurt by your mother or your father or someone. And maybe today you need to just forgive them. You need to turn and forgive them. And you may say, you know, Brother Hosein, I, I forgive them. But forgiveness, my friends, is not just in words, but in deeds. I had to literally go and find my father. And literally start taking care of him. Because your love is more than just mouth. It's your action. Jesus loved us. And he never just said love you. He gave us his life for our salvation. So as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. And you are reflecting on your life. I'd like to ask you a question. With all heads bowed and all, all eyes closed. This is a movie time. You don't need to be looking at me. Just reflect. Is there anyone here which said, boy, you know, Brother Eric, I'd like you to pray for me. I want to be a better father, a better mother. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior because I really want to be better. I've tried so hard and I've not been able to make it. Is there anyone like that? Just simply raise your hand and put it back down. Just raise your hand. Anyone like that to say, I want to be a better person. I see that little hand there, but anyone else? Anyone will say, yes, I want to be a better father, a better mother, a better person. I see that hand. Thank you. You can put it back down. Anyone else? I want to give a man a chance. <laughs> Look here. You can be better. It's not too late to be a better father. It's not too late to be a better man. I have seen many men who have been caught up in smoking and drinking and gambling. Have been able to turn to a better life. Turn away from being destroying themselves and their family. Because when you live a better life, it helps everyone. Anyone like that want to do it? I'm not going to stay too long. My friend, this is your chance to just say, yes, I want Jesus to help me. You know, take nothing, my friend. I ask, yes, I see that other hand. Anyone else would want to say yes. With all the head bowed and all eyes closed. I'd like you to just repeat this prayer after me. Whether you lift your hand or not, but you recognize that you, are, you need Jesus and you want to be a better person. You want to be a better father, mother, brother, sister, friend. Can you just repeat this prayer after me? This morning, right here. Dear God, I realize that I'm a sinner and that I need to be saved. Please, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you. I now accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And I promise to live for him the rest of my days. Lord, I want to be a better person. And I know you can do it for me. Because you have done it for others. Save me now. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer. Even if you never lift your hand. But you said that prayer. And you really mean it from your heart. Can I pray for you? If you can just stand where you are. I want to just pray for you. Wherever you are. If you will just stand. Once you said that prayer. And you genuinely mean it. If you will stand. I know I saw some hands. Please. I want to encourage you. Don't be ashamed. I stood up. Many have stood up before you. We want to just pray for you. You can just stand wherever you are. And we'll pray for you. Anyone like that? No one wants to stand. With the head bows and eyes closed. Please. Is there someone in your life that you need to forgive? You're, you know. You, you have had a terrible past. And you need to forgive them. If there's anyone like that. I'd like you to encourage you to just stand. And I'm going to ask pastor to come and pray for you. If you stand asking God just to help you to forgive that mother, that father, that friend, that cousin, that auntie, that co-worker who hurt you so badly. But you, want, you have been carrying them in your craw for long. And you like to forgive them. You have been trying to forgive but you just find it so hard. I know forgiveness is hard. I tell you. 
for 20 years I carried it in my heart while being a Christian. And I tell you, I found peace and joy and contentment by forgiving. I encourage you, don't leave here today with that pain and suffering. It doesn't feel good. It's not good for you. If you are like that, can you just stand? I stood one day and I prayed. And I found that peace and joy. If you want that peace and joy, can I encourage you just to stand as pastor comes and pray? God bless you. God bless you too. Hallelujah. Anyone else that feels like you need help in that area? Feel free to stand. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. My God and my King, I thank you for your forgiveness. <laughs> I thank you for the blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness and sets us free. And Father, this morning, Lord, you see your sons and your daughters, Lord, who are standing, who are saying, I have carried this unforgiveness long enough, and I want strength to deal with it. Lord, I pray, Lord, by your spirit, that you will come, Lord, and minister to their hearts, O God. Give them the strength. Give them the will to do. Lord, the psalmist says, I want to turn, but I can't turn. So, Lord, you turn them, O God. You turn them. You give them that desire that each day they will walk from forgiveness to forgiveness. That they'll walk in new levels of forgiveness. And they will shake off today and shake off tomorrow and keep shaking off until there's complete freedom. Lord, that thing that you're putting in their hearts to do even now, Lord, as a symbol of their commitment towards forgiveness, give them the strength to do it, O oh God. Give them the strength. Give them the strength to call that father, to call that husband, to call that child, to call that mother. Lord, to begin to deal with that situation. I thank you, Lord, that there's power in your name. And so, Lord, we reach out to that name this morning and we receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for your word that has gone. I thank you, Lord, for those who have prayed this prayer, this prayer of repentance. I pray for boldness, that in boldness, Lord, they will say, yes, I am ready to follow Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you for the day that has been. We thank you for your graciousness and your favor towards us. I bless all the, path, all, all the fathers in the room today. Lord, you know how sometimes it is rough, it's tough, then I have no money sometimes, Lord. Lord, sometimes we women just chat too much. God, we abuse the, the, the husband sometimes with our mouths. But Lord, I pray for grace. Grace, oh God. Enduring grace to do the job that they have to do. And Lord, I pray that they will enjoy doing the job that they have to do, Lord. That their children will respond to them in love. Give them wisdom, Lord. Give them strength. Give them what it takes to do it, Lord God. And cause them, Lord, to be men who love their children. Men who love their partners. And men who love their God. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may be seated. I, I, I normally we don't do this after preaching, but I'm going to ask the, the, um, the, the preacher a question. <laughs> he said that the father is to love the mother of the child. What happens when the mother is not the wife? <laughs> when they are estranged? How, do, how does that love look? Okay, so is, you're going to love the mother of the child. It may not be a wife, but it's the mother of your child. Because do you know that at Jubilee, in Jamaica, about almost 80% of the children that are born are born out of wedlock. That's how bad it is. And 50% of children born are born into a single mother. So half of the population are being born without a mother and a father living in the same cohabiting, right? And what you find is that it is you not disrespecting her, not beating her, not cursing her, not, not showing her all kind of things. And being there, go and visit her. You know, have no sexual relationship with her again, you know, because you know nothing to do because you have a family or you may have actually, um, you know, you, don't, you have other girls, but spend time with the child and don't disrespect her. Love her by 
providing for them. Not like the rest of them. Just have them and Jah will take care of them. You have to take care of them. And it's not easy for those who live and have to walk the baby at night time and they have a ball out daylight. It is, it is rough. You know, you have to try and help and provide and care for and provide some time also. Take the child and even a day and give the mother a little break. Come and spend even a day and help take care of the child. So there are lots of things you can do in loving the mother by, you know, just being there and helping her through difficult time. Be there to help. Go to the PTA meeting instead of she having to have to do that and take all is the one taking time off from work to go to the doctor with the child and go to the school with the child and go all kind of places with the child. Love her by just showing her and partnering and sharing with her the burden because having a child is difficult and just sharing that difficulty with her. Thank you. Wow. Amen. Good. Alrighty. We have come to the end of our program and we don't want to keep you any longer. And we do hope that fathers, you had a good time with us today. Fathers, were you, were you blessed? Gentlemen, were you blessed? Good. I'm glad you were. And that is our gift to you here at Fellowship Tabernacle. And we were glad that we were able to bless you. I hear that the blessing continues. I hear that they have some, is it Black Forest? I hear there's some Black Forest cake for the father. Because I, was, I hear that they, did, they were going to buy plain cake. And they say, no, it's men. We're not buying plain cake. We're buying black forest cake. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. So we tell that they, they, they have some black forest cake for you, which they're going to be serving. Um, I, think, I think you can go ahead and serve. I'm not so sure. Yes, you can go ahead and serve. Right. So they're going to be serving the fathers with some black forest cake. And we are officially going to be finished in a minute or two. But before we do so, I am going to ask one of our children here. And since, um, since Sister Ashley is telling me no, then I'm going to ask Sister Makeda. <laughs> She's going to come and make a presentation to our speaker. And we also have a presentation for Pastor Courtney, so I don't want him to go through the gate. All right? So she's come to come and make a presentation to our speaker. Uh, you can manage it. Mm -hmm. To thank him for, his, for taking the time out to be with us this morning. And so. All right. Um, I learned a lot, though I can say. Um, You're not a father. Why are you learning? <laughs> Well, each sermon you have to learn something. So, um, me, who my father isn't really present in my life as much, I do forgive him, but there are times where I rethink things, and uh, yeah, there are times where I rethink things and saying, should I, or something like that. But the sermon now made me rethink, so yeah, it's better to forgive him than have that in my heart. So, I hope you enjoy your day and enjoy this. Oh. Okay, okay. And we are going to now have a presentation to Pastor Courtney, who wasn't here earlier, but we have a gift for him as well. So we're going to ask him to come forward. All right, and our speaker has to leave, so wave him goodbye as he leaves today. Uh, that's how you're going to wave him goodbye? Thank the speaker for it. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Already. Oh, just so glad you're coming. Yes. Okay. And we are. Um, come, Pastor Courtney. Alrighty. Uh, <laughs> well, Sister Beyonce is begging to make this presentation. So we are going to allow Sister Beyonce to make this presentation, but I'm going to stand on her on the hem of her, of her dress, okay? You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Happy Father's Day to you. 
um, when I come to this church for many years, Uncle Courtney was a father to me. Not my biological father, but, you know, a good father to me. And he was there, you know, making sure I go home to my grandma and, you know, all of that. And I'm just thanking him for being a father to us here at church. And sometimes we miss him, although he's back. But at the end of the day, he's still a pastor. And at the end of the day, he's still a father to us. So thank you, Uncle Courtney. God bless you. Oh. <laughs> thank you very much, Beyonce. Happy Father's Day to all fathers here today. I love to say that on Mother's Day, we say Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. So I am asking persons, please refrain from saying Happy Father's Day to the good fathers out there. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, I want to thank all all of you for being here and for celebrating with the fathers. Thank you, mothers, for your patience. I want to thank the ladies who put this together. Put your hands together for them. Special, special thanks to the committee. And I prayed for Carl Neem because it was so many women working on this. I will just, I, I'm going to get into trouble if I start calling names. Okay? So I won't. But I'll just say the women did excellently. And they worked hard and they put all of this together. Some gave their finances, some gave their time, some gave their wisdom, some gave their expertise, and some just gave everything. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for making this a special day. And thank you, fathers, for coming. We could have planned for you and you didn't come. So thank you, fathers and men, for coming. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. And we wish you a happy day. Not just a happy day, but a happy year as you serve the Lord. Would you stand for the blessing, please? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you uncommon wisdom and strength to do that which you need to do for success in life. May the Lord cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you. And may the Lord grant you his peace. Amen. Be nice to somebody on your way out.